Hey, it's all Yokuts. Um, hello everyone. Um, my name is Cecilia Moreno and today I'm going to be showing how to make the tuli mats and the tuli boots. Um, I was going to show you guys how to make some tuli mats out of tuli and in our language tuli is called bumuk and um, the tuli grows right next to the water and I picked these yesterday. Um, going up. They're long green sticks, uh, similar to cattail, like they go right next to the water. So um, with these sticks, uh, we can make the string out of them as well. Did you want? I did bring a knife, but just to, to show how to split it. <laughs> just to show you guys how to uh, split them. I get one side. Make it shorter. Make as clip the size that you want and you insert it right in the center and you make a little slit and then I usually turn it about and I start pulling and get it pulling and then it's so flimsy that you don't have to do much pressure just to pull it right down the center and then when you pull it down it makes your one stick into two strings and I'll show you an example right now how the string looks on a piece of tulip stick. And I think stick, uh, this, the string in our language is called ilu. And as soon as you get it, have you done split it, and now you have two. And once you get it, it would look something like this all around it. And that's on, um, this for the string. Um, and then we have the sticks, and usually with the sticks, I cut it to size. I did about 12 inches on these to make a small miniature mat. Um, and then I made about 6 inches to make a little boat. I usually just get my tool, and then the two materials that you honestly need, just some scissors and maybe a little knife with some supervision from an adult. Because they can cut really easy. You cut one stick to size, and then you get your other one. I'll probably get it right there. I know I just have to cut at least six sticks to make a miniature mat. We can do three. So I'm going to make a small one. Make sure they're even. I do. You don't have to make them even, but. I'll do it again later. We're going to make a small one. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. I think we should be okay with this string. And then when we get your tool string, you make it about even on one finger and you pull it. And then on your first one, you wrap it right around this, the tool stick or the reed. And you bring it just about down to a quarter of the way, and you hold it really tight. And you, I pull one this way, and I pull one this way for now. You grab your second stick, put it right behind it, but really tight. And the one back here, and we'll go back here. Pull it to the back, pull it to the front, makes a little twist. I know it's kind of hard on the very first steps. You repeat it. Make sure my hands are okay. And then it goes over. You can also lay it down to make it easier for some people. And now I just pull this one to the that side. You can see. That one right there. Put this one right over that one. Try to make sure it sees. <laughs> Pull it, add another stick. This is the toughest part of making the mat. <laughs> After that, it says it gets pretty easy. I pull it this way, add the last stick, and pull it this way. And then what I do is I keep this one here on the side. And I rotate it. 
And this is where it gets a little tricky. You have two strings. You have one on this side, which you leave. The one on the back, you do want to pull up through your first stick. And kind of make it even, pull it tight. That one makes a little X formation on that. And then right around the second stick, you do the same motion of pulling it right there and right here. Put it right behind. But the tighter you pull it, the more straight it can be sometimes. So we're going to go right here on this one. Pull it right around that one. And as this tulu string gets shorter, we're just going to tie a knot, a simple knot at the edge of this side right on the last one. And we're going to go right over this one. If it goes up, we are going to just pull it right back down. Pull it down. And then we're here, we're left with two pieces of tulu string. And then you just tie it like a regular knot. It doesn't have to be fancy. I just pull it right in. And I rotate the knot to the side. It doesn't have to look too pretty because these are just mats that we use for our homes and our beds. You can make it even by pulling it down with your nails. And then I just do a double knot. Do it kind of tight because it can cut off on the end. And then I get my scissors and I just clip it. I move those. And then we want to do a couple rows because if you leave it like this, it's going to be too flimsy for your project. And then with this one, I start on the exact same, the opposite side. And I go a little bit up, not too much. You want to leave some space. Make sure this is even. And then you pull the string to this side. And then once you're there, put this one right behind the second. And we're doing a twining technique that's like weaving for six. Then we pull this one to the side. I pull this one right behind the third one. This one goes right above. Maybe. So they can get kind of flimsy, so you just got to really pull it tight. Right underneath this one. Pull it tight. That one. Put it tight. And then here we go over again. So we're going to do the second one. So you're going to pull it kind of tight so it makes sure it holds all your sticks together. So we do that little X formation. We're going to pull it right around that one. And we're going to go right here. So we're just going to finish it up right here. I'm going to pull it tight, pull it tight. But if it does break, you know, you can always just take it off and redo it. It doesn't take that long. Put it right behind this one. There we go. Pull it down. Pull this one right over. And then once we get to the last stick, we're going to do a double knot. And we can finish this little mat. Right over tight. The more you pull it tight, it's going to make it straight. Right over that one. I usually get the same size of sticks so it's not too much of a gap in between everything, the longer they're similar. Then we have one, two, three, four rows. And right here, we're just going to go ahead and make a double knot. And that's going to get kind of flimsy here. But here we go. As long as you can get one knot. Because this tulip is a little malleable, it's got to make it right through that hole. Just 
So we've got to pull it tight. Slowly, when it's the shorter screw. There we go. And then we're just going to get this side and make it even. It's not going to look too crazy, but move all that excess material to the side. And then right here, you have a little small tummy mat. <laughs> So we're going to be making the tuli mat. Um, I'm going to grab one tuli reed. It's very long, but we're just going to measure it to size of maybe about a few inches. And I get my scissors and I just clip it. And then I clip it again. We need a total of six sticks. So, Three. Hope this is enough. Four. Five. We're gonna get go ahead and grab one more stick. Because we still have to make the string, which I'm sure you had to do as well. And then one more. And this is the, gonna be the base of the mat. We have six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Bring this right to the side. Make these ones out the way for now. We're going to grab a knife. You just make sure to be really careful when you're using a knife. Maybe ask an adult to help you. That's what they always told me. Split it right down the center. And then we're going to put this to the side. And I always turn it. And I know when I do it here, and I have it and I just start pulling. Is there the material facing me? It's easier that way. And just go down the center. And again, it's too long. Go the other way. And this is how you split most materials your tulip, your red bud, your white root. You do the same idea. Put it in the center and you pull it with your knuckles holding part of it and you just pull it all the way down. And then now you have two streaks. And I think with two streaks, we should be okay. And then when we grab our tool string, you want to make it about even. You put it and you pull it. And it makes about an even amount. And I use my finger. We're going to grab our first stick. This is the tricky part when we first start. Put it straight down to the bottom of the quarter of the way. You can leave it on the mat. Pull it. So with your first string right here, we're going to leave right here. We're going to pull this one towards the back and fold it. Grab our second string, our second stick, and put it right next to it. It's kind of hard to see, but I'll move my hands to hold it, and you have two. So with this one, you're going to want to pull it towards your first and second sticks. And pull real tight. And then we have to add in our third one, which we'll put right here. And then as you see, we have a group three. We're going to hold it down. We're going to shimmy this one down a little bit. Pull that one right over that. Pull the second string to the back, place in the three. Add our second one in. And we're going to put some right behind that one. Shimmy that one down. And then we're going to pull this one this way. Put that one to the back. Add our fifth stick. Bring it over here. Pull that down. Right over that one. Have it right over. We'll click an X. Grab our last stick. Put it right there. As we have it down, you can hold it with your hands. Put it right over that one. And bring this one right to the back to hold it. And then we're going to go ahead and flip it, or you can go and just go and do it. But I do with a flip. I can hold it. Put it down. 
makes it easier for me. Pull it tight on both of them to make, to make sure everything's secure. It's going to look like a little X. You have an X right here. You're going to hold it really tight. This one's going to go right behind the second stick. You can go ahead and pull it down. And these things are really flimsy, which is just good when you're trying to wind it. Pull it tight. This one's going to go right behind your first one. Pull it. There we go. Then we have those little strings. Make it a tight X. Then we just go ahead and put it around this one. Pull it to the center where it looks even. Pull it right behind. This one. And so go right over this one as well. And we're going to go ahead and shimmy this one down after we fold it. Shimmy it. Got another one right here. And so as we get to this last one, we're going to tie a knot so that we can um, make sure it doesn't come apart. So we're going to get this last one. Pull it tight. I pull it tight. I'm just going to do a double knot, a regular knot. And it might be a little tough, but it's really flimsy when you can get it. We have one knot. I usually do two just so it doesn't break. You can do one if you like. Get another one. And you have your double knot at the edge. Hold it really tight. And you grab your extra two little pieces right here. And with your scissors, be careful just to go clip it. Clip it. And then I push this stick down to the even. And I grab my second string. And we're going to just repeat the process. I, stop on, I start on the opposite direction as my knot. Put it over. And I put it just a little bit up the way so we have a space in between. And we're going to do two more rows and then we can finish it. So I think again, we're going to have this here. Second string is going to go towards the first one. Stick. That way. Have it right there. We're going to go over and under, over, under, over, and under. Pull it tight. So once you start pulling it tight on this side, it makes your sticks become even and very secure. And go over, under, tight, flip it over, and we have that X little formation. This is what's going to hold it. And I go over the first, under the first one, shimmy it down, pull it over, and go right under it on the second one. It's the same motion all the way up, it doesn't change. Under, pull it down, and then we have our sticks right here, over, under, and we're going to pull it tight, over and under, and like I said right here towards the end, we're just going to make a little knot by going through it. And it has to be like a little elbow, but you just gotta push it and pull it. And there you go, that first knot. And then pull it. Pull it like that if you can get it without breaking. And then I just go ahead and get it again. And then clip it, the extra. And then you have a little toy mat 
It's a little rows and four rows and more six sticks. So it's a teeny mat. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to make some tuli mats um, with some regular material you guys have from home probably. It's some raffia um, and then some popsicle sticks because um, if you're not able to get the tuli uh, right here as I show to make these mats, we can always still do it with this material that we use right here. Um, with these tuli mats right here, um, we use these for our a lot of the homes to make a little, uh, can't tell what this one, but like a, the, the mats would be the structure of the home. We put it all the way around some sticks and this would be like the insulation and then the more and more you put on the um, your wall, the warmer your house would be as well as the air could, cool air could come in the summer. Um, this was also multi-use for a bunch of things. You would also, you could lay it down. It's like a little quirky material inside, very soft. <clears throat> you'd lay it down in little, like, kind of like um, layers, and you would make a mat, which would make your mattress. After having all layered up, you would throw like a pelt of like rabbit um, fur on top of it, and would keep your bed nice and comfortable. Um, I know the material is very, very easy to find and to clip. It doesn't take that long to do. But since we're at home, we can go ahead and use popsicle sticks. So when I start with my mats, I do six. We have six sticks, popsicle sticks, and then we have the raffia. So kind of like with this, the raffia, we're gonna get it with my finger. I pull it even, so it's even. As much as you can. It's easier when you start to weave it. Fine. So we're gonna get our first popsicle stick, and we're gonna slide it right down. And just like before, we're gonna go ahead and put them over. Put that stick down, put this one over, and then we're going to grab our second stick, put it right on top, and then we're going to this one down, put it right on top, right over, right down, hold it. It looks like a little fence. Pull it right over. Hold it. And I'll do, you could just go ahead and put that one there. You can always ask someone to help you, like a parent, to hold down your sticks if you want to make it look even. We got it here. Put it right over that one. And let's we'll grab our popsicle stick down. in the way, so I'll put it right here, put it to, towards, towards the six, hold it down, and then our next six, spin it, put this one here, this one you might be, I don't have to flip it like we did the last time, all you got to do is make sure to pull it, as much as you can down, and we have this one here, from earlier, and it does the X on the side, And then we're going to put this right underneath this one to show you it. See? And we have our little X design. And then we're going to go over and under. Pull it tight like you would the tool. The more you pull it tight, it's going to get nice and secure. So it's hard to see. There we go. And then we have our throws coming about. Pull it tight, go over. And if you have a long enough thing, you can go an extra row. You don't have to do the two rows. It's just that on my own, always kind of short. But if you wanted to, you can always do the tie the knot here. I'm going to go underneath that one. And do a double knot. Pull it tight. Do that little dot one more time. We're going to pull it tight. We have that double knot. 
You have your rose. Grab your scissors. Put the help of a parent if it's not too sharp. Clip that one. Click it. That's our first row. Grab our second string. You're going to measure it to half. And take this one over. And then we're going to go ahead and make sure it's a little bit of space between the first and the second. Tap it right here. And then we're going to push this one right underneath this one right here. Might just take a second. Then you have it. Nice and even. Grab our second stick right here, have it down. Pull our third stick up. Put it down. We're going to go over the third stick and pull it to the fourth stick. There we go. Push it down so we have another space to do a second row. Pull it nice and tight because it makes that nice and secure. So with our fourth stick here, we're going to grab our string, hold it down, and move to our fifth. Right behind the fifth stick, push it, and then pull it over the fifth stick onto the sixth, right behind it. This is where we can flip it if you want to. And then right here, we're going to go ahead and make that X. Pull it this way. Grab this one around the hot one. Then we have it right behind the first stick. Grabbing this one right here to go over. And go right behind it. Pull it to the back. And it has that X formation, so you can make it nice and secure. Pull it tight on both sides. And then we have this one here, right there, and then you see our third stick has our two rows going about. So now we're on our fourth stick. So we're going to grab right the stick with string behind the fourth, pull it, we're going to go right above that, push it down, and then we're right here on the fifth stick, right behind it, push it down. Pull over the fifth onto the sixth, and then this is where we end. So just like on this side, we're going to want to go ahead and make that double knot. So we're going to go right in between. Make it double. Let me have two knots. And then with the scissors, we're going to have to clip it. And then we have our miniature tummy mat out of the popsicle stick, which is very similar to this one. Hi everyone! I just wanted to show you guys a quick example of uh, what else we could do with the Thule reeds. Um, what we also use our Thule reeds, not just for our mattresses and our homes, um, we would actually use them to make our boats. And our boats are called um, you can see right here, a little miniature boat. We call it O1 um, for our boat. And I wanted to show you a quick example of what a larger boat could look like. I know it's kind of hard to see, but there's two children in the boat. Um, they are actually going to go take a little <laughs> boat ride on the like a little pond lake thing at Water Valley. They had uh, made this boat in one day with the help of um, some elders and some adults to make this basket. Um, boat <laughs> um, but it's a lot of twining and tying to make the boat float on the water uh, I make a lot of miniature boats so we can show to the children of what the larger boats were this is another example of what oops, there it goes of a miniature boat um, we actually clipped the ends on this one but we we're supposed to keep it um, but this is an example where we use a set of toolies string we used yarn and here's the totally reeds that are fresh, and this is an older one, but this is a miniature boat. Um, they're kind of fun, it doesn't take too long. Um, here's me and my uncle starting to make a boat. We are actually teaching children how to make it. Uh, we are splitting the, uh, the totally reeds like I showed in the previous videos. 
It doesn't take long, it's fun, and then the kids can do it within like 10 to 15 minutes as a, with a little bit of supervision and help. Um, but once they, you know, we make the miniatures, we should, they want to want to make a big boat, and here they are in the water with little paddles swimming with their life jackets on. It's very fun. Uh, the kids learn how to, uh, one, this one is learning how to fish. Uh, you know, you can do this whole thing with the spear. That's how they would fish. And they did learn on that one. So I'm just going to show you guys really quick how to make one. So similar to how we make the tooling uh, mats, we're going to grab our sticks. Um, we don't want to make them too long. Let me measure it. We're going to grab our scissors. And we're going to want to make sure we have six sticks again. We're going to use this one, just for, I can use for measurements. Cut one. Two. Three right here. If you notice some are kind of longer than the others, I just line them up and then you grab them all together. And just click it. After you clip them, go all these to the side. We have our six sticks. Then with our other toy, we need a couple strands to make this one. I think we use two or three. So we're going to go ahead again with your knife. Be very careful as this should be helpful as an adult. Made a little slit in the center. And then I have it in two. I'm going to go ahead and pull it down. And that one. This is a little thicker, so you got to make sure to be careful when you do it. It's longer, so it takes a little bit. I have a little pink, so you better be careful. Okay. A little bit longer. Okay, so now we have our string. So we're gonna grab one of them for now, one to the side. You'll want to make sure you grab your string and then as well as then make it even. Use your finger to pull. And this one's a little different from what we're going to do. Instead of doing one string, uh, two, one stick at a time, we're going to do two sticks at a time. So we're going to have two sticks in our hand. Pull the tulip string down. Use some room. We're going to do the full over and under again. So we're going to do have this one over. Grab two more sticks, put it right next to it, and put it right down on the mat. Hold it. Got the two sticks right there. Make it even. Pull it right over that one. Grab our two sticks. So we have that one here. Push this one's that way. Shift this way. Okay. And with this one, we don't have to do the two rows. We can just do the one. So we're right here with our first row. And we're going to go ahead and do the double knot again. So pull it right through. Make sure you do it tight because you don't want your boat to sink. Nice and sturdy. Okay, and we 
have the two. I'm going to cut off these little bunny ears, like Grandma would always say. Because they're the extra material. Okay. And then we're going to turn this one over because we want this to be on the same um, side, on the opposite side. So grab your tooling string on your finger. Have it right over that. Yeah. And put it right here. Maybe in the same amount for down here you want right here. So you can start right about here. As you can see. Remember to pull one string this way. And then right here you have your second one. You can have it and push it right down for a second too. Okay, just make sure to hold them up. We have it right there. Hold it down. Goes right above that one. Pull it right down on that one. Under, over. And you have the two extra ties right here. This one much faster. Gonna go ahead and. Make your double knot. And do it kind of tight. because this is the material where that did not add has a little bit more to leave up. It's okay. We're going to go ahead and cut off the extra material. Okay, pulling it tight. All this extra material is just going to cut off. Okay, so now we have a small miniature mat, except for this time, you have your mat and you're going to kind of fold it so like you would do a boat. See, it's making a boat form. And then with some extra strings, we're gonna go ahead and just tie it all together. Round it out. Or all around like a round. Make a little knot. I hold it over and then do the knot on the back. You have it here. You can, you can do a double knot. On this one, I can't just because the string's too short. And these little extra materials you're going to go ahead and clip. We're going to have to do the same thing to this side, but you're going to want to make it round. So you're going to make it into a, like a U shape. Grab our extra piece of material for the string. Round it. I'm gonna put it right around. I go over top of that and I make a knot in the back. A good thing with these little bolts, you can put them in a little pool of water and they should float. You can do little miniature tulip boot races with your kids, to see whose boat goes faster. And then we have this extra material. You can either go on the top or just put them. Then now you've got to spread your boat a little bit. Once you spread your boat, you can make it pointy. And this is the fun part we're going to add and make our little bench. So we're going to go ahead and grab some material. So we're here, and we're going to make little cuts into them. It doesn't have to be big. I have one example size. Just want to cut pieces, random sizes, about three or four. And as you have your boat, this is making the bench. So the wood you would sit on. So you have one, two, and three. And that's a miniature tooling boat. It doesn't look pretty, but it does float. <laughs> um, just to explain a little bit more about the tully boats um, for the tullies. Um, even though I showed the miniature ones here, there's only a couple pieces, but when you make the actual 
sizes for the adult or children. Um, we're gathering like hundreds of tulis, just as, as an example, because you have to make them in bundles. Um, once you make the bundles, it's kind of hard to see in this photo, but they're just handfuls of bundles. You just grab handfuls and handfuls of tuli, and then you grab your string, and then you're just grabbing them as an example just to show. You're grabbing all your tulis in your handful, and you're getting them and you're tying them. You're just getting all your sticks, and you're just tying them in bundles. And then with your bundles, you tie those bundles again by twining them together um, to make these large wraps, because that's what they are. Um, I want to see seven to eight bundles, because you have some that make that U shape. Um, once they're tied together, you have them, and then you have the two on the side, I think two on the other sides, and a couple on the bottom. Um, these bundles are going to make you buoyant on to float in the water to fish, because we're using these tuli wraps to fish for our fish, for our food. Um, with all these tulis, uh, they have a cork side, cork inside of it, it looks like a really spongy material inside. Um, that would make you float with the, um, so the more tulis you have in my mind, uh, the more you can float on it. So you want a lot of tulis, but not too much to make it heavy because the water is, is going to uh, soak into the tulis. Um, but as you t um, get them all these tuli bundles and you put them in, together and tie them and you have bundles and butters all over the ground and you get those tuli bundles, start twining them together really, really tight so you can make that U shape of a boat. And um, we can go ahead and add some more tulis in the center as a little seats. Like I have an example here to make the sun float. Um, those are where the kids would sit on and or adults. Um, these boats can be very large because you want to fit two male. Usually who would um, would go fishing, uh, or at least have two children, but two male would always go in there um, to make sure your boat was even in the water and it didn't tip. Um, this is a really fun project to do, and I always enjoyed it. Um, I know children enjoy it. Um, here they are, like together, uh, fishing. Not well, fishing, but they're uh, using like a kayak version of it to go in the water. But I guess to go fishing, they're all sitting in the tulies. They're very, very large tulies and like very big bundles and just it's the idea is grabbing them with your hands, tying them, twining them together and you can go out and go fishing. But this is just a smaller boat that we showed but it's missing the ends on it. Um, but it's really fun little projects to do and I hope everyone has enjoyed. I mean, have to leave the mats and make in the boats. It's, you know, a fun project for the kids and I hope everyone gets to enjoy it. Thank you.